What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon and we've got a fun welding episode today. We're going to be TIG welding some stainless steel. It's going to be a repair video so it should be a lot of fun. Stick around. So this is what we're working on guys. I just recently replaced the exhaust on this motorcycle and the exhaust came with this little nut that's welded on here and that's to accept the bolt for this guard. You can see what the guard does. Basically it just kind of like covers up all of that area down in there. It doesn't really do anything. It just kind of dresses the bike up. Problem is, is that they didn't weld the nut in the right spot. So we're gonna weld a new tab onto this exhaust and because it's stainless, we're gonna have to TIG weld it. I got a grease pencil. I'm gonna stick it through this hole and make a mark on that pipe right where this is gonna line up. Right there. And there it is. So now I put a little mark on there. You can see it now. Hopefully you can see it right there. So I'm going to go bend a piece of stainless to try to get this angle just right because there's a little bit of an angle here that we got to get this just perfect. So I'm going to try to like leave it together uh, for right now. And then once we get, get the uh, bend just right, I'll take the exhaust off. We'll bring it in the shop and we'll weld it up. I'm going to start off by making this smaller. I'm going to make this piece maybe three inches long or so. Just a little more manageable. Using my portable bandsaw I built, uh, stand, if you want to check it out, I'll have a video link up above. So now I've just got this Harbor Freight uh, inexpensive bender and I'm just going to rough out approximately a one inch area that I want to uh, put a one inch 90 on. Clamp down this bar and we'll... Bend it. You see that gave us a nice little 90 degree tab that we can go mess with outside and see if we can get it to fit good. So I've temporarily fitted it up to the motorcycle and you can see that I've got a faint scribe line here that goes here. So that is the edge of the bracket. It's going to go just like that. But the one thing I don't have is I don't know this dimension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep this, I'm gonna tack the top of this tab up, and then I can just slightly bend this to the angle where it needs to be. Then we can get the measurement of what we need on the bottom side, and then we can bend that tab over as well, and then finally weld it all out. And I'll probably take this nut, grind it off, and weld it to the inside of this little tab right here to give it something to bolt to. This is the stock muffler guys, so it's going to be something very similar to what you see here. You see how they've got a little tab, they've welded the nut on the inside, that's pretty much what we need to do for ours. I've got everything all cleaned down and wiped down with some acetone, and I know where it needs to go, and it's going to go right here. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to tack this without any filler and just you know put a blast tack on it we'll bring it out and try it on the bike so that way we can get this bent to the exact uh, angle that we need it at and for this repair guys i'm going to be using my yes welder ct 2050 and i'm really excited to share this with you because at the time of this video you can still pick this machine up for like half off what it normally goes for so i'm excited to share it with you because if you guys are looking to get into welding, this is the ultimate machine. This does AC TIG, AC pulse TIG, so you're going to be able to weld aluminum with this. Does DC TIG, DC pulse TIG, stick welding, it's a plasma cutter, non-touch, pilot arc, and it's also got a built-in air compressor. So you basically plug this unit in and you've got everything that you need. The only, Basically the only process this doesn't cover is a MIG welder. It's pretty much the only thing it doesn't have. You can cut and weld and do everything with it. And it's dual voltage. So for you guys that don't necessarily have a 220 welder plug in your shop yet, you can plug it in and use it on 120 volt because it comes with an adapter, which is kind of nice. I'm going to be using 330 seconds laser tungsten with this. This is an awesome tungsten, especially for you guys starting out because you can use it on everything. Use it on aluminum, carbon, stainless, you name it. So it kind of takes out a lot of the guesswork. And this 330 second stuff you can use pretty much all the way down to razor blades up to like quarter inch. So it just makes it uh, really user friendly. The TIG torch that comes on this 
Again, also pretty simple. This doesn't come with a foot pedal. You can get a optional foot pedal with that machine, uh, but this actually has the settings on the torch head itself to adjust your amperage up and down as necessary. Let me take you real quick through the setup on this machine. So again, I've got videos on this, but I'll just kind of show you uh, the quick parameters of how fast this is. So you've got AC TIG, DC TIG, stick welding, plasma cutter with an air compressor and a plasma cutter with its onboard air compressor. We're gonna be doing DC TIG. We're in the 2T mode. Let's toggle through our settings real quick. Uh, Pre-gas, I've got a half a second. Start current's gonna start at five amps. It's not gonna slope up, so it's gonna go right to our set amperage, which is 45. Let's set that for 50. Uh, we'll go a little bit higher. I find these charts online. You can go right online. Uh, Miller Welds has a calculator that I've shown you guys a lot. Uh, it's a great resource if you're not sure what uh, you're welding up for material, what you need for amperage. We're using 16 gauge stainless, so we're gonna need right around 50 amps to do that. Uh, Downslope, there is none. Stop currents, five amps, and we've got uh, five seconds of post-flow gas. So that's that. That's literally that uh, simple of setup. This machine also does uh, smart setup on, uh, if you're doing AC TIG, you can actually go down through and set your weld position and set your material thickness and stuff like that. And it'll, uh, and it'll adjust itself automatically. It's like a synergic feature. And I believe that's only uh, available on AC TIG. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have a link down in the video description if you guys want to check this welder out or you're interested. But like I said, you can pick this welder up right now for almost like half price. It's under a grand for this welder, which is an incredible deal just alone for the fact that you're getting an AC TIG welder that does pulse. That in itself is worth it. Plus you're getting all the other features including the onboard air compressor. And I'm set at about 32 CFH of argon. So I got the tab tacked on, but I got a little carried away. That's okay though, we can fix it. Uh, you can see how it just popped a little hole right here. Uh, I was just focusing my attention just a little too much on the edge of this plate, that's okay. We'll go back once we put filler on this, we'll fill this all in, but uh, what I need to do now is get this tab at the right angle. So I've kind of got everything roughly fit up and bent as to where it needs to be. You can see I got a little bit of a gap right here that I need to squeeze that down so it's nice and tight so we can weld it up nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clamp this down on my fixture table, uh, just using a couple homemade pieces of material that I've got. It's just a piece of angle iron with a flat plate that I put on top. Uh, I use this pretty much for clamping irregular and round objects. So that'll allow me to clamp this securely down to my bench. Then I can clamp that down so that everything is held nice and tight. Now I can wipe this down with a little bit of acetone and TIG this up real quick. And there it is guys, that's my first pass. I thought that that was a little bit of undercut right there. Um, it's actually proud right there. It's just, I guess it's an optical illusion. It looks like it from here and it probably looks that way through the camera, but um, no, this bead is actually higher than that. So yeah, that'll be good there. We'll flip it over, we'll weld out the other side, and then we can start focusing on getting our hole punched through it and uh, Somehow getting this nut off here. I haven't really decided how I'm going to remove that nut, but we'll, we'll work on that too.
Well, if you ever wondered how strong stainless steel tack welds are, I'll tell you what, this is a true testament because when I looked at these, I'm like, oh, these are going to rip off after a while just because they're little tiny tacks, uh, almost like what I would call a blast tack. It seems like they have filler. Well, this right here is not wanting to come off, and it has the smallest of smallest of beads on it right there. I've got a little tiny, just a little tiny bead there. And another little tiny bead there that I've been going after with this little triangular file uh, to try to just file down in there a little bit and then bend it back and forth with this uh, scrap bolt, hopefully to break off this nut. Uh, I don't really need to get it off there because I have another nut. I just think it would look um, like there was a mistake if I left it on there. And I don't want it to look like it was a mistake. So... I'm just going to kind of keep filing at this and hopefully eventually it'll come off. But yeah, super strong. Hey, oh. Took an act of Congress, but we got it off. Now I just clean it up a little bit with a file. So I just went and stuck it in the bike and put that guard on, that shield. Then I just stuck a Sharpie through the hole where this bolt actually goes through. Made a mark on this. Now I'm just going to drill this out oversized. Then I'm going to take this nut that we just ground off, this piece here, and weld this onto a piece of stainless. Then we'll slide it in there and we'll just do a couple little blast tacks right on the edge to hold this nut in the back there. Because I'm not going to be able to get, get that in there to, to TIG weld it in. Then this will be uh, all ready to bolt back together. I just got to cut another small piece of this 16 gauge stainless steel. And I'm going to make this three quarters by three quarters. What I've done is, guys, is I took that bolt that actually has to go through that shield. And I've threaded it through this little piece that we just made. And threaded it into that nut that we're actually going to weld. So now I'm just going to kind of stick it into my table. Kind of like that. It'll sit there nice. And I'm just going to put a couple blast tacks on like three of the corners and call that good. And then we can weld this tab in behind our bracket. It all makes sense here in a second. So now we'll take our welded piece that we just did and put it in behind this, just like that. Line this up. Throw this bolt through it again now. Snug it down. Now we can throw a tack on it right on the very edge right here. And do the same thing on this edge over here. This one has a slight gap. So I'm going to have to put some locking pliers on it temporarily to pull it together. Get a tack on it and then I can weld it. There it is guys. There we go. And the nut is down inside all welded on. That'll look good. And this, like I said, this all gets hidden in behind that little guard. You'll see some of it, but it won't be uh, too, too noticeable like the scratches and stuff like that. So and where I cut it off. You won't see any of that where I cut that old nut off. So yeah, pretty slick. Now we just gotta go put it on, try it out, see how it looks. And here it is, and look how much better that looks. It covers up a good majority of that exhaust all along there. I love it. Everything bolted right up and fit well. And you can see, let me pull this peg back. You can see the bracket down in there just barely. Everything bolted up really nice. And if you want to see how this exhaust went on this bike, it was pretty slick. This is just some cheap, inexpensive uh, Chinese exhaust off eBay, which is obviously why that that bolt right there didn't fit into the original 
uh, piece of pipe, go check that out over on my channel, Motivated207. We'll do a little cold start. I know you guys are probably gonna ask. to it guys i want to thank you for watching thank you guys for tuning in if you're wondering about any of the tools or the equipment that you see me using in this week's episode i'll have links down below and if you're wondering what i'm working on before it makes it up to youtube you check me out on facebook and on instagram i'll have links down below as well and as far as that welder goes you can pretty much hop on board and i'll have links to that welder uh, it's one of the reasons why i posted it because i have information that that sale is going to be ending and you have the opportunity right now for, to get that machine for like half off what its list price is i've been super happy with the machine which is why i want to share it with you new videos every friday so until next week guys i will see you then take care stay safe see ya like comment subscribe